What's good, YouTube? It's Mirabo Squid back in their squid video. It's Orcus time, or is it? We just got Harpoor back to one, which seemed like it took a while. I mean, this card probably should have came back at least a couple of years ago. It feels like it's been severely power crapped. And I've been experimenting with our Orcus Feathered Friends, but I'm having a lot of trouble actually making this deck modernized to where it can be super competitive, which is why I've come to you guys, the community, for help. If you guys think that you can make this deck a lot better than it is. Obviously, with the one Gursu, the Orcus Mech Knight, which is the starter of the entire deck, aside from something like an Armageddon Knight, which I realized was that one this whole entire time i'm like what armageddon's still at one anyways with orca c mech knight you can actually normal summon and dump a copy of heart horror or nightmare depending on how you want to do it i realize that nightmare can also dump the gizmic orochi so that might be another argument where you not want to lead off with the nightmare and burn it in case you have another way to discard it off the hand later you get a free orochi right so from here, you can obviously use the effect of Gizmek to summon a token to both players' side of the field to play around something like an Evenly or an Imperm, but I realize that that just plays severely into Nib because you're summoning basically three monsters off of the one normal summon Gursu, and your end board is not that different at all. So personally, I just like doing it this way instead. Just going to banish the Harp Horror, summon out the Nightmare in this case, assuming we don't have another copy in our hand to leverage. Gonna go into our Galatea, which is the star link of the deck. Banishing the Orcus Nightmare, send the Symbol Skeleton, and then we're going to use the effective Symbol to bring back the Orcus Mech Knight in the Graveyard. Going to go off and shuffle back the one copy of Heart Pourer back into our deck so we can reuse it later. Activate the Babo, and you guys kind of know how this plays out if you remember playing Orcus back in the days a couple of years ago. And then just summoning out the Dengursu to use the effect to reattach. Yep, he still has that effect to reattach the banished Orcus that a lot of people forget. It's not just a send. So reattaching that Orcus Symbol Skeleton so we can use it as a quick effect on our opponent's turn. Going into IP Masquerade. So effectively, our normal summon gives you two interruptions, but it's very, very fragile. So on our opponent's turn, we can banish the Symbol Skeleton as a quick effect thanks to the Babel that's on board. Bring back the Dingersu, affect Dingersu, send something, and then we can use Happy Mask Arena to go into either Nightmare Unicorn or ASP Little Knight. Bear in mind that we are dark locked anytime we use the Orcus effect, so that's another thing to keep aware of. And this is just very fragile, because obviously you're stopped by a lot of cards. You can get stopped by even a Cosmic Cyclone on the Babel, and that just hurts, not to mention any hand traps. So for me, it's hard to justify playing this that a one card starter nowadays in Yu-Gi-Oh should definitely get you more than two interruptions, right? We're talking about like four or five interruptions, especially after Phantom Nightmare comes out in the case of the Simple Spoils stuff, the Snake Eyes, Ash, and Populous. But I mean, is there any way to make this deck good? I mean, Bistios are a thing now, which is also hurting the deck as well. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. So the Horus is another cool engine that you can play in this deck for the fact that they're level eights so that pairs really, really well with the sending as well of your Orcus monsters that happen to be bricked in your, in your hand. You can just send them off of either Imseti or King Sarcophagus, which is kind of cool. Also being level eight, you can pair it well with Gizmek Orochi to go into your power rank eights before you start your play. So some cool things that you can do obviously is go ahead and get the Emsetti on board, send for Happy, and then bring out Happy and bring out either the Fulton Galaxy Lord to negate hand traps like Nibiru or whatever before you start off with your Gursu plays. Or you can go, if you're missing engine, you can actually go into Zombie Vampire and hope to mill one of your Mech Knight combos to, or, or rather your Orcus combos to start playing because this card only comes in three copies and it's a machine that's not searchable. So you really don't have a lot of starters in the deck. You have like three, maybe four with Armageddon Knight, maybe five with the Rota. So it's very, very hard to start. And this deck is another issue consistency wise. This deck definitely struggles a lot. So the Zombie Vampire kind of helps there. But again, it is very susceptible to things like Vistios, DD Crow, Ghost Bow, Imperm on your Gursu, Valor, a Cosmic Cyclone, like the list goes on. These cards are definitely not modern proof in my opinion. So I, I'm kind of struggling to make them good. And I'm wondering, I can't find anything else on YouTube, but do you guys have any tips for this deck? Do you actually think it can be viable or is this something that we're just like copium at this point? So deck wise, this is probably what the deck would look like. I whipped this up really quickly, you know, just maxing out on Nightmare so we can send it off the horror stuff. We got one of each of the Orcas. There's not really an argument to play World Wand anymore. I just don't think the card does anything now that we have Harp Horror back. There's no really point or a uh, point in the game where you want to go into this along your lines that I know of. Because Mechoro you can send it off Nightmare and then the three Gursus. The thing that really hurts is obviously the lack of starters in this deck. Like, we're very, consistency-wise, we're very, very down bad. Like, guys, look at this. Four starters, essentially, and it's just not very effective. And then, obviously, I'm thinking playing Fenrir just to add for padding for the 
hands that we just don't have enough juice. You know, Fenrir just is a good card on its own with hand traps. I think hand trap line is probably good to go because I realized the combos with this deck are barely non-existent. You're literally ending on like the IP combo that we demonstrated. There's not really any super powerful combos. The fact that Gersu only ends up in two interruptions is really, really sad because modern proof Yu-Gi-Oh cards are entering in like five or six, especially when you think about Phantom Nightmare and like the sinful spoil stuff that's coming out. It's just like crazy what you can do. Whereas Gersu just does not do enough on his own. And then I think just playing Pot of Prosperity is probably the best chances of getting to your starter. Yes, I know it conflicts with M. Seti. It's a little unfortunate, but I still think it's worth it. Like, obviously, you can make an argument for playing cards like Allure of Darkness as well as Orchestrated Return. But then you're thinking, like, do you really want to banish your dark monsters? Because these are the guys that you, you want to use, right? You don't really want to send them. And you don't want to, like, uh, if you draw Orchestrated Return and you don't actually see a name, that's also equally bad. Because look at this. We're playing three, four, five maybe like the eight the orchestrated gersus but do you guys really want to be sending this off of return when it's your starter so like you're never going to see a good hand with orchestrated return plus something you want to stand very consistently over 12 rounds it just makes no sense to actually play this card and a lot of these cards are just re i realize they're just not modern proof it's just not good enough in the current metagame which is why i made this again i want to be proven wrong do you guys have something that i'm missing completely from this deck that will actually make it good? Are there something to be aware of that the, the some kind of combo that's, you know, in tandem with maybe another engine, maybe the scrap engine or something I've seen people playing on YouTube. I just don't see it personally, but I would love for the community to kind of experiment and show me up if there is some cool combos and some cool ways that we can actually just duck the hate as well. The Bistios being an option against, you know, these guys being dark and the fact that DD Crow and, you know, kind of stuff that we talked about all exist. And then on top of all of that, this is just not a very good combo deck. It's more like a mid-range deck. So I'm like, you know, if we can put two disrupts with the Gersu and then have a bunch of hand traps, maybe it's just enough to do well enough. I could see it doing well enough on a local level, maybe regionals if we're being lucky and the player's really, really good. But aside from that, I feel like the Horus is probably the best engine we can play with this deck. And then hand traps is what I'm thinking right now. I know some people are playing Bistios as well, so maybe that's an option. But guys, what do you think about this deck? I realize the extra deck is also very, very tight because you have to play multiple Gersus and Galateas. But is there something that we're missing again? Let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this as a whole. Are Orcus potentially competitively viable or are they just power crept? I think Orcus Harpoor will probably come back to three eventually as it is in the OCG and does absolutely nothing. But let us know in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys all next time in the next video.